There were several things that made Tionic's uh, case unique. Um, in the last 20 years, there have only been three stranded beluga calves that we're aware of. In 97, a Cook Inlet beluga calf stranded, and at that time, uh, was decided to try to push it back and to see if it would find its mom back out there. And so now 20 years later, we, we saw another calf strand and this time we were in a position that we could help our federal partners and bring this animal in. And there were no other animals anywhere near him and so it was authorized by National Marine Fisheries Service to bring Tionic into the Sea Life Center for rehabilitation. So it's just a not a common animal or we don't see a lot of stranded calves. Um, it really presented an opportunity to rely on and or to engage with our colleagues in the lower 48. Um, and they were able to respond very rapidly and come and help us for almost six months here at the Sea Life Center to provide all of the care and needs that Tionic had. Caring for stranded animals isn't just about caring for stranded animals. It's an opportunity to learn about the species and the pressures going on in the population in the wild. We have definitely learned a lot from him. As part of the health assessment when he came in, we took a number of samples, ran a number of tests, and had a, um, got a feeling for the kind of bacteria that he was carrying, uh, some of which were making him ill, others were probably just what he's exposed to in the environment. And again, that helps us understand the various pressures that might be being experienced by beluga in Cook Inlet. Cetacean rehabilitation, uh, it, the odds are against uh, you and your, your patient. It's just, it's very, very challenging. Fortunately for this calf, we felt that he had been with mom for a little while, so he got that initial burst of antibodies and good stuff from, from mom. Um, and he also had learned some behaviors, like he, he knew how to suckle, and he very quickly learned to suckle from a bottle, and so that helped him out in particular. Pretty much from the moment he arrived, um, we had to be so involved with his care and hands-on that he quickly became super engaged with staff and we became his surrogate pod or his, you know, what he could relate to. And so he was very tactile. He, he loved to be around staff. He loved to rub on staff. He um, was very engaging with us. Um, as we, as he got healthier and we started introducing toys, he would engage and play with toys. He would, um, he loved bubbles and he would, um, he liked to dive down and, and interact with feet. He loved kelp strips. They tend to be very tactile and very pod oriented. And um, if, even if mom isn't with them, others in that social grouping will be with them. and. Um, and so we were just providing that, that unit for him. And even though he's now with whales, um, other whales, he's still very personable with the trainers and interacts with the trainers and comes up and, and seeks that, that engagement with them. We have some really strong animals in our pod that are good moms. We have good surrogate moms. Um, good co-parents, if you will, so we ha and we have some really good role models that he'll be able to follow. One of them being a young calf that is the same age as him. Wildlife response in particular as it relates to small cetaceans, uh, it, it's less than 10% chance that an animal that strands on the beach, you're going to be able to, to turn around and keep alive. And so the success rate uh, is, is very low, which is not to say that we shouldn't be trying, it's just that they, they require very unique things to help uh, turn that animal around. And so it, it was an incredible opportunity and we consider ourselves very fortunate that even though the odds were stacked against Tyonic, uh, he, he was able to thrive in this environment with all of the care that was provided.